and welcome back everybody. My name is Larry Terrell. I'll be your host and this is Wine Exposed. Now by joining me here on Wine Exposed, you're putting yourself on the road to discovery. And when it comes to wine, discovery is bliss. So the uh, wonder of wine awaits us. Let's not uh, waste any time. Our wine journey today takes us to Washington State. We're looking at a white blend called 14 Hands. This is their Hot to Trot White Blend 2009 Vintage. It's an unspecified blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Gris. Picked this up here in Tampa, Florida at a retail shop for $9.99. And let's see what we got. Um, yeah, this wine comes from Patterson, Washington, which is down in South Central Washington State. Um, it's in the Horse Heaven Hills uh, AVA. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the, uh, this wine is just as Washington, so it um, doesn't really specify whether the fruit comes from the Horse Heaven Hills uh, appellation, but... Um, uh, you know that area, as uh, you can see from the, as you can read from the back of this bottle, if you ever pick one up, it says, "Born to the starkly beautiful hills of Washington State, 14 Hands Hot to Trot White Blend is named for the unbridled spirit of the wild horses that once frolicked there." And when I read that, I think of a winery that drove the wild horses out of there. So that definitely doesn't make me feel very good. But uh, such is uh, such is industrialization of an area. So what are we going to do? Anyway. Uh, this is a wine that comes from the, Ch the Chateau Saint Michel Winery, or um, the uh, Saint Michel um, uh, stable of wines. No pun intended. Um, largest uh, winery in the area of Patterson is Columbia Crest, which is also associated with Saint Michel wines. So let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay, so this is a nice light color uh, straw lemon. If I had to put it on the color wheel, I would definitely say that it's definitely associated with those. Colors, um, you know, sometimes I look at a white wine and if it's too golden, it definitely puts me off. I mean, it definitely gets me thinking or, or second guessing the wine. Um, you know, here this looks very appealing, looks very light, very crisp, uh, looks like it's going to be refreshing, so this is inviting to me. You know, on the nose, this wine is also very appealing. Um, Getting a lot of uh, apple right off the bat, you know, that's definitely the uh, classic characteristic um, aroma of uh, Chardonnay is apple and, and pear, which I'm also getting a little bit of. I'm also picking up a little bit of citrus, like some lemon and lime, but I'm also picking up some, some, uh, some tropical fruit, mainly pineapple. So as you can tell, this is a pretty complex nose on this wine, and, and that's pretty much what you can expect when you, uh, when you go to a blend. You know, looking at blended wines, you get in, you're picking up some more varietal characters. Everything kind of lends itself to the complexity of the wine. You know, I, I love chocolate. I love peanut butter. If somebody else didn't. We might not have uh, Twix today or Reese's peanut butter cups or whatever. So, really good stuff. So, good complex nose. Um, it almost suggests a little bit of sweetness. It's um, it comes across as very fruit driven, but a lot of times people confuse uh, fruit driven wines for being a little bit sweet. And being that this is so fruit driven, I, I would expect this wine doesn't see any oak whatsoever. Looking at the viscosity of this wine and seeing that the uh, tears are coming down a little slow, uh, I would also assume that there is some residual sugar in this wine, which is definitely going to uh, make itself a bit more appealing to me. I, I definitely have sweet tooth, so we'll see what's going on. All right, well, definitely picking up a continuation of the apples and pears, the classic uh, flavor characteristics of Chardonnay, but also getting the complexity that uh, the, the Pinot Gris brings to the blend. Um, definitely a continuation of the, the uh, citrus and the, um, and the tropical fruit. Um, really, a lot of pineapple here, a little bit of melon, and a little bit of, a little bit of minerality. So, good complex wine. For $9.99, I think this, is gonna make a, this would make a really nice addition to a restaurant wine list. Like I mentioned, it is a very fruit-driven wine, so it does come across as being a little sweet. Uh, I do detect some of that residual sugar, so I think people are going to uh, like this wine. I think it's very appealing uh, on a mass scale. Um, the finish is a bit short. I'm also getting a, a touch of alcohol on the finish, but uh, yeah, the, um, the finish is just a little bit short on this wine, not, not quite 30 seconds. But nice. Um, in addition to having this wine by itself, I mean, I definitely see this as, as being a quaffer first and foremost, being that 
It is, um, it is a little bit sweet. It's not, uh, I mean, it definitely has some acidity, but it's really well balanced. Uh, but I definitely can see having this wine with food as well. I'd probably put this with um, shellfish, mainly uh, lobster or crab. Um, probably put this with like maybe even a crab salad or seafood salad. I would put this with uh, lighter pasta dishes, maybe pasta and some grilled chicken. Um, but first and foremost, I'd probably put this with uh, like a you know, fruit platter, definitely one with apples. I think this would pair really nicely with fruit, fresh fruit. Um, not so much a vegetable platter, but definitely fruit or a cheese platter would work nicely with this wine. Would I give it as a gift? Absolutely. $9.99 is a great price point. I think this wine shows great value. It'd probably score it somewhere in the neighborhood of 87 points. So for that, I think it makes a, a fantastic gift um, and, and a fantastic value. So I think that wraps another edition of Wine Exposed. My name is Larry. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.